like and subscribe free giveaway at 1000 subscribers I used Fusion 360 to create the 3D model. If you want to watch the full length video of me creating the model, please have a look in the description below. Please keep in mind that I am not a professional Fusion 360 sketch artist. I started designing my own models about 7 months ago, so I am still looking at ways to improve, but hopefully you can learn from it and avoid issues I struggled with. Like you can see, there are multiple ways to improve the pedal and pick designs, but we can do that at a later stage. I had to redesign the pick holder. The original holder was designed for a small 3 to 6 volt DC motor, but I quickly realized that the motor did not have enough torque. I replaced the motor with a 6 volt DC motor with medium torque. The new motor had enough speed, torque, and was small enough to use when playing guitar. I use Simplify 3D to slice all my exported model parts and prepare it for printing. You can always use different programs, but I find this the easiest, in terms of settings, layout, and functionality. My settings file is linked in the description below. Please make sure to adjust settings to match your printer. I am using a Creality CR10, so my print bed is 30cm by 30cm. The print took about 10 hours to complete. This is the stock standard Creality CR10 with no upgrades and no replacements. I highly recommend it, especially if you're just starting out and is totally new to printing. Be sure to wear protective gloves when removing the print. I sliced my finger while removing the parts from the bed. You can play with the print settings to reduce the visible print lines and get a more precise look but you will wait way longer for the print to finish. I was super satisfied with the result. I used an Arduino Uno LM293D motor driver, 10K ohm potentiometer, and a 6 volt medium torque DC motor. Please remember that I used two power sources, one to power the Arduino board, and two to power the motor. I used an adjustable voltage power adapter to match the motor requirements to avoid burning the motor or circuit. Using the same configuration, we can simply adjust the pick holder design to a bigger motor, and adjust the voltage input accordingly. I used the standard Arduino IDE. Like you can see, we get the value from the potentiometer, and apply it to the LED and motor. I will link the file in the description below. Remove all the support material from the prints, and make sure you don't damage any pieces. When using 3D printed PLA plastic, it is normal for the plastic to swell. I used a scissor to make certain pieces fit properly. For example, the potentiometer wasn't fitting exactly how I wanted. Just take a normal kitchen scissor and slice some plastic away. The same counts for the LED light and push button. Cut a piece of any guitar pick and glue it to the printed pick holder. Make sure to get super glue, as picks vary in thickness. I did some updates to the model design after I had some issues fitting the pick holder to the shaft of the motor. The RCA cable is used to connect the motor to the pedal. You can find RCA cables in any electronic shop. Be sure to get at least a 3 meter cable to give you enough distance from the pedal when playing guitar. I am soldering all the components that are housed in the top section of the pedal. If you don't have a soldering machine, you can try and tape or glue things together, but it won't be as reliable as soldering. 
Remember, you will probably be stomping on the pedal when in use, so please use the correct methods. Use a glue gun to re-ensure all top housed components will stay in place. Be careful to not overstrip the PLA when trying to make things fit. Also, fit the motor in the finger holder and use the glue gun to make it sturdy. I was using a TIP120 transistor to control the motor, but I overpowered the board and damaged the transistor. I switched over to the LM293D motor driver and made sure to use a separate power source for the motor. If you look closely, you will see that I am powering the board and motor with one power source. Every time I pushed the button the lights on the Arduino board would dim. This was the result of insufficient power. I will add a link to the schematic with the updates in the description below. And finally, we are all done. Let's go give it a test. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to support us, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Have an awesome day.